Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and we're back again with another awesome tutorial video. And today we're going to be talking about phase change diagram. So let's begin. If you look at the following diagram, we're going to be looking at the relationship between two things, between temperature and heat energy. And if you notice, as temperature increases, heat energy increases as well. And this is what we call a direct relationship. So let's go ahead and start at this point on our phase change diagram, and then we'll go up. So if you notice, at this point, we have a solid. The particles are close together, they're tightly packed, and they're condensed. And as the solid heats up, the solid is eventually going to get to the point where it melts. Now, at this point where it's melting, you have solid and liquid. So the solid is going to continue to heat up until all of it turns into a liquid. And at this phase, we have a liquid. Notice the particles are spread even more, even farther apart. Their kinetic energy is increasing. And as we go up the phase change diagram, the liquid is going to heat up until it start, begins to boil, which means that liquid is going from a liquid to a gas. So it's going to boil or evaporate. And then eventually, all this liquid is going to evaporate until the point it turns into a gas. Notice that at the gas phase, the particles are spread very far apart. They have a lot of kinetic energy and a little potential energy. So now, we can also go down the phase change diagram. So when we go down the phase change diagram, that means our temperature is then decreasing and our heat energy is decreasing. Remember, it's a direct relationship. So now, let's go down the phase change diagram. If you notice, these gas particles begin to cool off. And as they cool off, they're going to condense to the point that they start to turn into a liquid. And they're going to continue to condense until all the gas particles condense into a liquid. And then the liquid is going to cool, 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 and the particles are going to condense and come closer together until all the particles come, become closer together and they begin to freeze. This means these liquids is going from a liquid to a gas. And then the particles will eventually get to the point where they, all the liquid particles freeze and then they turn into a solid. So as a review, as we go up the phase change diagram, temperature increases, heat energy increases, particle motion increases, and as a result, the kinetic energy increases. And then as we go down the phase change diagram, temperature decreases, heat energy decreases, particle motion slows down, and as a result, kinetic energy decreases, but our potential energy increases. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a quick quiz review on the following. So you're going to analyze the phase change diagram below and answer the following questions. You have two minutes to begin starting now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's check and see how well you did on your quiz. So number one, as temperature increases, our heat energy increases as well. Let's look at number two. Number two says, what happens to kinetic energy of particles as you go up the diagram? Well, kinetic energy means particles are in motion. So as we go up, the particles' motion increases. Why? Because the temperature is increasing. And then what happens as to the kinetic energy of particles as we go down the diagram? Notice the particles condense and come closer together. So that means the Kinetic energy is decreasing as we go down the phase change diagram. So let's look at number three. So what happens to potential energy of particles as you go up the diagram? Well, kinetic energy and potential energy, they actually have an indirect or inverse relationship. So as one goes up, the other goes down. So as we go up the diagram, the potential energy decreases because the objects or the particles are moving faster and faster. And then as we go down the diagram, the particles are slowing down and they're condensing to the point where they form a solid. So the potential energy actually increases as we go down the diagram. Number four says, what phases of matter are at points A, C, and E? Well, this should be pretty simple, so let's go ahead and look at it. At point A, we have a solid. How do we know? Because the particles are tightly packed and they're vibrating in place. And then at point C, you notice that the particles are slightly further apart. So at this phase, we have a liquid. So they don't have a definite shape, but they do have a definite volume. And then if you look at point E, the particles are very spread apart, and this would be a gas. 
particles don't have a definite volume, nor do they have a definite shape. So let's look at number five. What is occurring at point B as you go up the diagram? At point B, as we go up the diagram, we have the solid and it is melting to and turning into a liquid. And then what is occurring at point B as we go down the diagram? Actually, that liquid is going to freeze into a solid. Let's look at number six. What is occurring at point D as you go up the diagram? So as we go up the diagram, this liquid is going to start to boil. That means that liquid is going to start turning to a gas. And then another word you're here for it is evaporate. And then as we go down the phase change diagram at point D, we actually have it, the gas is going to start condensing into a liquid. And at number seven, at what point do a solid and liquid exist at equilibrium on the diagram? Equilibrium, equilibrium just means at what point do they exist at the same time? So if you notice, when the solid starts to melt, just like you take a piece of ice, you have some liquid, but you still have ice there. So at what point do a liquid and exist, do a solid and liquid exist at equilibrium on the diagram? That's going to be at point B. Just like you have a piece of ice, some of it's going to be melting into a liquid, and then some of it's still going to be a solid. And then number eight, at what point do a liquid and gas exist at equilibrium on the diagram? If you notice, it's going to be the point where they are boiling. That liquid is going to start boiling into a gas. So that's going to be at point D. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you did very well on your quiz. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Once again, I'm Chavis Spivey signing off with my, my son, Jordan Spivey, and y'all have an awesome, wonderful day. Peace.